Coach Hagen coached for Notre Dame with Lou Holtz. He coached for the Jets and the Browns when they made the playoffs. That's true, right? All right. He coached for a number of colleges, and now he is coaching coaches, and he's coaching you tonight. Welcome Steve Hagen from Georgia. What's up, everybody? You got to sit on the edge of your chair. We're not going to be here long. We're not going to be here long. You don't want to be here that long, do you? I can see it on your face. Tell me your name. Joel. How about Hope Y'all? She has the best southern name. You don't say it right up here. But she has the best. I know she's not here to defend herself, so I'm going to pick on her. But Hope Y'all, that's a great southern name, isn't it? We live down in Georgia, so they say y'all. You know what the plural of y'all is? All y'all. <laughs> Come on. Wake up. Anybody up there in the back? Come on, all y'all. Hey, who has a pen at their table? They've got to have one pen at each table, okay? Look in your pants pocket, look in your purse, whatever. This is what I want you to do. Everybody, you got to join in. You can put an M on your hand, but really I'd like you to write the word magic on your hand. Write the word magic on your hand, somewhere on your hand. Don't look at me like I got 11 heads, okay? Write the word magic on your hand. Everybody, if you got one pen, pass it around, and while you're doing it, listen to me. Okay, because this is what this is all about. you got to be part of your own miracle. Can you hear me in the back? Act like it. <laughs> I'm teasing you. you got to be part of your own miracle. You've got to be part of your own miracle. We see all these athletes up here. All right, we see all these athletes giving their testimonies and uh, all these scholarship award winners giving their testimonies. they got to be part of your own miracle. That's what Jesus wants you to do. Be part of your own miracle. I was a coach for uh, 11 years in the NFL. A lot of crazy stuff happens in the NFL. Those guys don't just get there on luck. They don't. It doesn't just happen. They don't just hope something good's going to happen when they're 14. They just don't sit in the house, play video games, and go, man, I hope I can make it in the NFL. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Does that make sense to everybody? Kelly, I know that makes sense to you. Kelly's a superstar. Okay? Have you met Kelly? You got a girlfriend? Just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not a matchmaker. You got to be part of your own miracle. So my first job, I'm trying to get my first job. I grew up in Southern California, eight-year-old, ball boy for the Dallas Cowboys. Who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, you would. You know you would. I was like the envy of my neighborhood. Kids would come up, man, hey, Steve, can I, can I be a ball boy? And I'd be like, eh, probably not. I don't think that's going to happen. No, I didn't say that. But I was a ball boy for the Dallas Cowboys because they used to come to Thousand Oaks, California and train. They still go to California. They just don't go there. My dad was the director of all the grounds and facilities at California Lutheran. And uh, when they came out to California Lutheran to check out the facility, they needed somebody to make sure that the fields were pristine. They don't want to practice on a goat ranch where they got these high-priced guys turning their ankles and getting hurt. So they asked my dad you know, could you do this? And of course they paid him. And then uh, they also asked my dad, could you make sure that we have ball boys for when we come out here in the summer? And my dad goes, perfect. I have four sons. And so bang, we were in. And then all we had to do was find a couple other neighborhood kids and we were rolling and, and we were good. That was America's team. Who remembers America's team? Hold your hand over your heart. Come on. That was America's team. That was Roger Staubach. Tom Landry was the head coach. I'm going to drop names because those guys were good. Dan Reeves was the running back coach. Mike Ditka was the line, or, uh, tight end coach. Gene Stallings. You know Gene Stallings? We got any Alabama fans in here? We're too far north. We got one guy back there. You know about all y'all. That's right. He's shaking his head. Yeah. That's what uh, Gene Stallings was, the defensive back coach for him. They had great coaches, and they were led by a great coach. Tom Landry was a great Christian coach. In FCA, Jessica, the Tom Landry Award winner is someone that gifts FCA. Where's Andy? Andy ran off and hid. If you gift and donate $10,000 or more, you become a Tom Landry Award winner. He was such a celebrity coach for FCA and such a proponent of it that they named an award after him. And that's what you want to be. We're say this is our mission. This is our mission. We're not going, we're going to Nicaragua and we're going to Haiti and we're doing that kind of stuff. But right here, this is our backyard. This is our mission field right here. We don't want to lose one of these kids, right? You don't want to lose a kid. 
Do you want to lose your daughter, your son? You don't want that to happen. This is our mission field right here. Let's get selfish. Let's protect this mission field. Let's work in this mission field, okay? Magic, I told you to write that on there. How many people wrote that on there? So we only have a few good listeners. Ah, why are you looking so guilty? <laughs> get a pen, write it on there. What's magic mean? Does anybody know what magic means? Make a greater individual commitment. Magic. Make a greater individual commitment. I wrote this little book right here. It's called Coach Him Up. And it's about the seven miracles in the book of John. Now, since I haven't been coaching, I've got a lot of time, so I write. It's about the seven, seven miracles in the book of John. Jesus wants you to be part of your own miracle. He wants you to run track. He wants you to play volleyball. He wants you to be a great football player. He wants you to be a great basketball player, great baseball player. That's what Jesus wants out of you. He don't want you to just sit on a couch, smoke a pound of weed, hope something good happens. That's not what he's looking for you to do. He wants you to be part of your own miracle. And so when you go through these seven miracles in the book of John, does anybody know what the very first miracle Jesus ever did was? Turn water into wine, right? What did he do before he turned the water into wine? What did he tell the dudes at the wedding? He said, we're out of wedding, dude, or we're out, we're out, we're out of wine. What did he tell them? Anybody know? Can you go fill up these jars with some water? And they were looking at him like, what? What? We're out of wine. We're not out of water. We're out of wine. He said, hey, just do what I ask you to do. And his mom said, just do what he tells you to do. She knew who he was, right? His mom knew who he was. Jesus knew who he was. So the guys go, and they get these big jugs, and they're carrying them, and they got them, and they bang, boom, and they take them over there, and they're full. And Jesus goes like this. And his mom says, you know, they're out of wine. And he goes, yeah, I know. She goes, hook them up. And he goes, right now? She goes, you know you can. Hook them up. And he goes, all right. Turned it into the best wine in the land. But those guys had to be part of their own miracle, right? They had to be part of their own miracle. They had to make a little bit of a commitment. That's what FCA is about. You got to make a little bit of a commitment. You got to play a sport. You got to be part of it. You got to exercise. You got to work out. What was the second miracle? Anybody know what the second miracle was? This Roman official is uh, on the road, on this dirt road. Jesus comes up, he's walking. And a Roman official gets all panicked, and he's like, my son, he's like 20 miles away. You know, what can you do? Jesus is like, what do you want to do? He's like, I want you to heal him. I want you to heal him. He said, you got to believe. you got to be part of this. you got to believe. Can you believe I can do it? And he's like, yeah, I believe you can do it. you got to be part of this. you got to be part of this miracle. And he's like, my son lives 20 miles away. He's down there. He's not, he's not here. He's all panicked. And Jesus is like, hey, relax. Don't flinch. He's like, he's all right. He's like, what? He's all right. I told you he's all right. He's all right. I got to go. Jesus did a lot of hit and runs, right? Did a lot of hit and runs, little flybys. And he said, when he walked away, he said, hey, and remember, don't tell anybody I did that. Right? It was like, drop the mic. I'm out. And what did that guy do? He got on the cell phone, he called home, and he's like, hey, on a Roman cell phone, you know how they hit him back then. And he said, hey, what's going on? He said, hey, at about 7 o'clock in the morning, he was healed. And that Roman official was like, you know who that guy was? Who was that guy? So Jesus was at a wedding. He makes some wine. And they were like, who was that guy? And then now this Roman official, who was that guy? What's the third miracle? Remember that? Third miracle, this dude's hanging out at the pool. He's been there 38 years. You hear me way back there? 38 years he's hanging out. What's Jesus say? I know you know the answer to this. What's he say? He comes up and the guy, he says, hey, Jesus says, hey, do you want to get well? And the guy goes, I've been here 38 years. And Jesus says, well, pick up your mat and walk. Do you want to get well? When you got a concussion, do you want to get well? When you got a sprained knee, do you want to get well? When your ankle's twisted, do you want to get well? You got to be part of your own miracle. Coach, you coach track. 
right? Your kids pull a hamstring. They pull of this muscle. They pull of that muscle. Do they want to get well? Some of them don't want to get well. Why are you laughing? Because it's the truth. Some of them don't want to get well. I've been around football players that don't want to get well. They want to get paid. But they don't want to get well because when they get well, they got to get back in the game. And when they get back in the game, they get exposed. And when they get exposed, some, some of them get cut. And then they don't get paid because it's not a guaranteed money. You got to want to get well. What do you want? So this dude's laying at the poolside for 38 years. And Jesus says, what do you want? And what are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? Kelly, what are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? You want to be the best on your team? Why wouldn't you? This girl is a superstar. We're over at the school. And I, I know I'm going to brag her up and I'm going to embarrass her a lot because I love her. Uh, I need two volunteers. Bang, boom, she hops up on stage. And we're doing some, some kind of fun clap drill and all that. And she's like leading her half of the class, you know. And there's like 70 kids, 60 kids on this side. And she's like... Kneel down, sit up, sit up, clap, boom. She's telling them. She's a born leader. That's who she is. It's in her. It's in her DNA. God put that in her DNA. If she doesn't use that, I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell you right now, it's a sin. Honestly. If you don't go lead, it's a sin. Be part of your own miracle. Make a greater individual commitment. That dude's laying at the pool for 38 years, and Jesus said, he didn't say, go pick up your mat, roll it up, and go jump in that pool. You know what he did? He said, get up and walk. But he didn't pick him up. Jesus didn't pick him up. He didn't carry him over to the pool and then throw him in the water. He didn't do that. He said, get up and walk. Be part of your own miracle. Your team doesn't look good. Your team's not that good. You want to change your team? You want to change your team? Team's okay, right? You were okay last year. You weren't great. You win the championship, okay? Your team's okay. You want to change your team? Change, you, change yourself first. Change yourself first. Don't go, well, Sally, you know, she can't kick the ball very well. And Julie, you know, she's not very fast. How about you? How about you? How well do you kick the ball? How fast are you? How many slam dunks did you have in the last game? How many free throws did you make consecutively? How about you? How many touchdowns did you throw? Be your own, be your own miracle, okay? I love this next one. Jesus is up there, and he's feeding 5,000 on the side. There's really probably about 20,000 because they only counted the men. He's got this pregame meal he's got to make, and he's got how many what's and how many what's? He's got five loaves. And two fish. And he asked Philip. He's like, hey, Philip, you got to help me out. Do you don't think Jesus knows the answer to every question he's asking you? Honestly? He goes, hey, Philip, what do you think we can do here? And Philip goes, whoa, dude, I don't have any money. I don't got any money. Do you really think Jesus wanted to hear that? You think Jesus wanted to hear that? He didn't want to hear that. What Jesus wanted to hear was something, just something, just something. That's what your coach wants to hear, right? Coach, you want to hear something. You don't want to hear an excuse. He's like, you want to hear something. What can I do, coach? What can I do? I'll be there. What can I do? C coach, put me in. Put me in. I'll guard that dude, coach. I'll guard him. Uh, he, won't, he won't score when I guard him. I promise you he won't score when I guard him. That's what Jesus wants to hear. He wants you to be part of your own miracle. He wants you to try to figure it out. You don't have to figure out the whole thing. You just got to start to think, to start to figure it out, and then he'll help you. He'll help you. How about this one? Jesus walks out on water. It's a stormy night, and he calls to one of those cats in the boat, and they're all sleeping in the boat, and he sees one of them on, in the boat, and he's like, hey, come on out here. Could you imagine this? You're standing. This is water. This is the boat. And you're going like, me out there? And he's like, come on. Come on out here. He could have calmed the storm. He could have made that whole lake cement. And he could have walked right out there to him, shook his hand, high-fived him, and slapped him and back on the butt and gone back in the boat. That's not what Jesus did, did he? He wanted to find out 
what he wanted to do. He really wanted to find out if he's going to be part of his own miracle. How much courage does he have? What's he going to do? What's he going to bring to the game? That's what he wanted to do. He wanted Peter to make a greater individual commitment. That's what he wanted. He wanted him to make a greater individual commitment. How about this one? He heals a blind man. All these miracles, each miracle is a bigger game. There's a bigger stadium. There's more people following him. He's winning. Jesus is winning. It's just like a championship, and he's marching to the national championship. The national championship was, you know, we just celebrated Easter. That's the national championship. That's the world championship. Last, last miracle before Easter was Lazarus. He could have rolled the stone away and gone in there and unwrapped him, but he said, come on out. Walk out. Be part of your own miracle. Show everybody who I am. Tell them who I am. That's what you guys do in FCA. You're part of the miracle. You make a greater individual commitment on Thursday, on Tuesday morning, on Wednesday at lunch, whatever time that your coach at your school puts out there, you do that. Everybody practices. Everybody goes to practice because that's what we do. That's what athletes do. But not everybody goes to FCA on Thursday afternoon or Wednesday at lunch or Monday morning at 7 a.m. Not everybody does that. You made a, you made a greater individual commitment. Magic. Don't forget that. It's not magic. It's not magic. You made a greater individual commitment. It looks like magic because of what you did. That's why it looks like magic. Jesus made a lot of things look like magic almost because of what he did. What he did. Garrett, where's Garrett? I can't say your last name. You were, you were up here. You were uh, right here, my man. Tell me your favorite Bible verse again, and then I'm going to be out of here. I can't even hear that. Does that sound like his favorite Bible verse? He's like, huh? What was it? Yeah, football players are loud, dude. They're not, they're not like soft voices. Joshua 1.9, what is it? It was our camp theme last year. FCA's camp theme, rise up, okay? God told Joshua, you need to rise up. You need to be courageous. That's what FCA is. Kelly? That's what FCA is. You need to rise up in your schools. Parents, you need to rise up. You need to support your kids. When they go to FCA, you need to high-five them on the way out the door, and you should say, what would you learn today? Can I go next time? And yes, the answer is yes, you can go, and you need to go. But God said to Joshua, he said, you need to rise up. But in Hebrew, it's rock, chazak, amatz. And that's what it is in Hebrew. And you know what it really means? This is what it means, and I want you to look it up on the Internet. You better man up. You better man up because there's 36 kingdoms in there, and they're not asking you to come up there. They're not asking you to come up. They don't really even want you up there. So you better man up and you better get your boys ready because you're going to war. Okay? That's what that means. God doesn't play around. And we are so glad that you chose his team, that you're on his team. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, you're on his team. Parents, you're included. Coaches, you're super included because you have the influence of a whole team. Donors, you're super included because without you, it's so hard to do what Andy does here. It's so hard to do it. He can't do this on $11.95 a week. He can't do that. He can make... He can, he can get you guys involved and have great banquets like this, and that's what this is all about. And I know I might be embarrassing him, but that's what this is all about. This is about making a greater individual commitment for this community, for your children, your kids, right here. And that's what God wants us to do.
He wants us to rise up. He knows what's out there. He knows what's outside that door right there. God knows exactly what's outside that door. The world's outside that door. This is our team meeting. This is where we get the game plan. This is where we huddle up. This is where we strengthen each other. Because when we go out there, there's 36 kingdoms that are after us. And we got to be ready to fight. Do you understand that? That's what this is all about. FCA loves you guys. We love you guys. We love you, just like Jesus loved you. And we want you to fight, scratch, bite, and do whatever it takes to be the best you can be on your teams so you can be a shining light and you can be the difference. And they go, wow, have you seen Kelly? That girl is different. Why? And then she gets an opportunity to stand up and share why she's different. Because she's got the light of Christ glowing through her. Thanks for having us here. My wife Amy over here, superstar right there. Raise your hand, Amy. We've been here all week. We love you guys. We love the Boquists. I don't know where they are. Doug's running around taking pictures. Debbie's over here. We love you guys. We love Lima. You guys are great. It's been fun being here this weekend. And uh, let's do this. One clap. When I say set hit, we get one clap. Everybody hold your hands six inches apart. When I say hit, Kelly knows this drill. We're going to clap. Set hit. <laughs> oh, man, that was so weak. <laughs> Kelly, stand up, Kelly. Get them right. I'm out. Thank you.